Hi, I'm Josh. I'm Dayton. And today we are reviewing Searching. Searching David Kim, who is played by John Cho from Harold and Kumar or the new Star Trek movies. His daughter goes missing and after 37 hours with no leads, he decides to start looking at her computer and finding evidence that way to try and help the police find her. The main thing that this movie has going for it is that the entire thing is shot on a computer. This isn't the first time that's been done. It's probably the best. I can't think of any other examples, but I feel like this is going to stick out. When you really think about it, so much of an investigation does rely on just mm -hmm. being on computers, calling people and talking to people. Since they tell this story through the computer, it makes it so much more interesting whenever it happens. It would make it easier to connect with. I really loved this movie. So. I did too. I didn't have great expectations. I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I honestly just agreed because I was like, yeah, sure, it seems interesting. I'll go mm -hmm. over and check out. And then walking out of it, I think what I even said, I was like, this is great. So John Cho is fantastic. John Cho this. is fantastic in this. Deborah Messing plays the detective assigned to their case. And I think it's so interesting that they're both comedic actors. Comedians can do drama better than drama people can do comedy. Comedian can give that dramatic timing, but if you took Daniel Day-Lewis Day -Lewis. and put him in a comedy, it would be very jarring, I think. And so much of John Cho's acting is just looking at Yeah, just looking directly at a camera. One of my favorite things about these types of movies, I mean, I say these types, the only the ones I've seen that are filmed on a computer screen are Searching and Unfriended. You get a lot of insight into the characters based on the things that they do. He'll type something out and then delete it. The thing is, we don't really know much about Margot his daughter. Yes. But we, we find out so much about her just through, through the, the things she does. Through the, we find them out as David does. I just think that's so interesting that our generation dedicates so much of our lives to the internet that we can literally almost form our own version of this person and view them for who they are based on just their actions online. We're going to spoilers for searching. Go to the time code at the bottom of the screen if you want to avoid spoilers for searching. could solve the whole case through just what he finds on the computer. He basically does. He's just looking through something and then notices yeah. something's up and more pieces start to fall into place that he didn't even realize were missing. I think that is very effective. Deborah Messing's character says it. The most help you can give us is going through your daughter's computer. Now that you've mentioned Deborah Messing's character, right? shall we talk about the twist? That she's not assigned to the case, she volunteered for it. Her son is actually the person that attacked Margot. They think she's dead, but they're not quite sure. He pushed her into a ravine. So Deborah Messing deliberately volunteered for this case. To cover it up. I know Deborah Messing from Will and Grace. I trust her. You just assume that she's good because she's Deborah Messing. Yeah, she plays <laughs> friendly characters. And what's so interesting is that I was thinking about this after the movie. There's a scene in the middle of the movie where she and John Cho are talking about parenthood. Sometimes you don't know who your kid is. My son was lying to people about this thing mm -hmm. that I had created and I hadn't created it and he was doing it to just get money but and she went along with it yeah. to protect him. I think that is very good foreshadowing, they, which I didn't even think about in the moment. I was like, yeah, moms will stick with their kids as mm -hmm. long as it's not extreme, but in this case, it does go yeah. extreme. And the entire movie, she'll be having conversations with John Cho, and then her son will walk into the room and look very distressed, and she'll be like, hey, it's okay, I'm handling this. And you think it's just because they're really close and he's worried because his mom is so into it this case. invested in this, but it's yeah. because he doesn't he want did. to go to prison. <laughs> I think the best twists are the twists that you don't see coming, mm -hmm. but make perfect sense and enhance the meaning of the movie. Because the movie's all about parenthood. I was expecting the main message of the movie to be about listening to your kids and being there for them. And that is the main message. But then when you throw in Deborah Messing into the mix, it creates this whole new subtext of, oh, what will a parent be willing to do to help their kid? Mm -hmm. And that is a big overarching thing is what is a parent willing to do to help their child? Like Joe and Joe gets into a fight with a guy because he puts a comment on a Facebook post about his daughter. He accuses his brother. He accuses of his brother of doing it. That was another twist that I saw coming more so. And it's fascinating how he figures it out as well. It really is just like by chance that he figures out that the person they thought did it, didn't do it. That was the point where I was like, oh no, this is really good. My jaw literally dropped when that happened. I love what this movie had to say about how certain people act online. John Cho is going through all of his daughter's contacts and he slowly reveals that she really wasn't popular, didn't have that many friends, didn't mm -hmm. talk to that many people. As the whole escapade of her being missing happens, more people come out being like, she was my best friend and oh, we miss, we miss her so much. It was all this thing where it's like two days ago you didn't even know right. 
anything better. That's a very apt statement on society at the moment. Oh, also, Margot survives. I respect movies that don't have happy endings. And so I was very willing to just be like, alright, that's what this is. But when it came around and she was okay, it was like, oh no, that's better. And at the end, I think you do see the relationship is better after going through this horrible, horrible ordeal. It feels good to sometimes have a happy ending oh, in yeah, a dark absolutely. movie like this. I probably wouldn't have felt the same way about it if it didn't have the ending it did. John Cho has to learn that lesson mm -hmm. about being a better parent, and it would have been all for nothing if she had died. Let's go to final verdicts. I don't have much to say except go and see this movie. It's fascinating enough to begin with because the whole thing's told on a computer screen and it's a riveting mystery. You really want to know. You care about John Cho. Wow, that rhymed. The things that make this movie as amazing as it is, I cannot talk about. It's yeah. important that you know bare minimum. Yeah, going you know as this. little as possible. So I will give it yes. a nine. Okay, I agree with that. I think it is, it is important to go see it. I walked out of this movie being like, Oh, I need to tell my mom a lot about my life. I don't love movies like this, but I still think this is very good and worth seeing, so I would say I'd give it a seven. So the final verdict for Searching is an eight. What did you think of Searching if you saw it? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Also, like and subscribe. Peace, Peace out. out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch our last video. Also, follow our Instagram account. Link is in the description. Also, my Letterboxd account is in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.